All right, everyone. So if you saw my uh, post on uh, Sunday, yesterday, I noted that I would not be uploading my game plan for the week ahead yesterday because I went camping this weekend with my two boys. We went up to the Green Mountain Forest in Vermont. We had a great weekend off grid. And I, you know, I wanted to do that for them because um, they're out of school now for the summer. Summer break has just started. So I was feeling like I initially was like, oh, I'll record it on my laptop and then I'll upload it, you know, when I'm out. But it just it just didn't happen. And I was like, you know what? This is a boy's trip. Let's just enjoy it. Um, you know, and to be honest, I, I wasn't feeling a lot of FOMO coming into this morning after Friday's, you know, sell off on GameStop. I kind of just felt a little discouraged. But, you know, I thought quite a bit this weekend about GameStop. And I'm actually going to upload a video separate. I haven't recorded it yet, but I think I'll record it after this recap and then upload it later today. Um, because, you know, as I was thinking about the stream on Friday and kind of everything that happened, um, I, I have some thoughts on it. And I have a couple theories that I want to run by you and see what you guys think of it. Because something there is a little bit, I don't know, something's a little funny. So I'm going to upload that later, and I'm not going to get into GameStop a whole lot here in this episode because I'll save it for the next one. But, um, you know, needless to say, I was not expecting much out of it today. Uh, you know, obviously the price sold off because we had this um, shelf registration and earnings announcement and the earnings were bad. So, yeah, the price kind of popped up a little bit, um, you know, during the stream, but then sold off even more. And, and today it's gone even lower. So my thinking right now was, well, maybe I should start watching it. The only catalyst at this point would be, you know, the company putting out news and possible news would be that they've closed the 75 million uh, share offering. But it's probably going to take them some time because when they announced it the first time, it was on, I think, May 17th that they were doing the 45 million share offering. And then I think they closed it on May 24th, or that was when they announced that they had closed it. So it's pretty close together. So I'm wondering if, you know, we'll see an announcement this week about them completing that 75 million share sale. And if we do, then we might see a little bounce. But anyway, so this morning when I s sat down, although I pulled up GameStop, I wasn't interested in, you know, taking any trades on that here this morning. So I was left with this gap scanner uh, right here. Oops, let's see. Um, there we go. So right here. So DSY up 100%. I pulled this up and I was like, ugh, recent Chinese IPO. You know, at this point, I, I, I really, I don't have a lot of faith in these, but, but nonetheless, regardless of faith, uh, the price by the time I was sitting down at 7 a.m., um, you could see already we were, you know, had moved up and we were stair stepping back down. So we had a nice rally early between, you know, 4.30 and 5, kind of pulled back a bit more than you'd like, but it did bounce off that nine moving average. What's interesting about this pullback right here is that it actually went below volume weighted average price. So it went below VWAP, dipped down, and then it rallies back up through VWAP to new highs, goes sideways, and then drops again. This is a really tough pattern because, you know, this is the five minute chart. If I look at the one minute chart on this, let's see, we'll get dialed in here. So looking at the one minute, um, we see that we have this first move, which wasn't based on news. It was just the IPO from yesterday or Friday, pulls back, kind of drops down again below VWAP. Then it rallies back up, micro pullback, kind of micro pullback, goes up to six. Nice. Drops here, bigger red candle, bounces back up, off the nine on the one, going sideways, weakness, MACD crosses over, and then a moment or so later, a couple minutes later, we break down. We're back below VWAP here, and then we break above VWAP. We pull back for a second and then push higher. We dip down here, which is sort of a retest of VWAP, and that could have been a spot to be a buyer squeezes up but a topping tail right that candle's topping tail a couple more topping tails then it kind of pulls away up to 650 but it comes back down quickly and then that's the high of day and that's that so short-lived opportunities on it early in the morning nothing for me on that and although it did end up you know rallying a little bit at the open it was not something that i felt comfortable trading so dsy left it alone no trades now we could take a look at the overall market just for a second. Um, so big picture of the S&P 500 is that, you know, 
we're in pretty darn good shape. I mean, this market is strong and this is good to see. So, you know, we're in a bull market right now and, um, you know, I mean, we'll see, we'll see how far we can ride the momentum, but uh, market's just off the all-time highs. So that's good to see. KWE penny stock, this one hit our scans early this morning and pretty much immediately spikes up. This was right here. Um, it's like eight something AM, pulls back 55 cents though. For me, a little too cheap. It pushes higher, pulls back, pushes higher, pulls back. At the open, it punches up to uh, 105 and I actually got an order ready for this because I thought, okay, if this can hold this level here of a dollar five, then I might get a trade for a move higher right here. But here was the problem. You know that my max share size is 5,000 shares until I first made a thousand bucks. So when I pulled up my order on this and typed in for 5,000 shares, I was like, let's be real. How much money am I even going to make on this? I'm probably not even going to make 15 cents. And then I thought, well, you know, it's only a dollar a share. I could just take 10,000 shares. And I thought, yeah, that's true. But you know, and so I'm kind of waffling over it. I'm like, I don't know, I could, but I don't know, it's kind of risky. And I kind of looked away and sort of like thinking, looking at it. And then I look over and it's halted down at 85 cents. <laughs> I was like, you know what? See, that's that's what would happen. You know, I buy 10,000 shares and then I'm down and all of a sudden I go from, you know, a dollar to 75 cents, I'm down 2,500 bucks. I probably didn't even have the potential to make much more than five or 10 cents, but sure enough, there's the dump. So I'm glad I steered clear of it. Uh, I was sort of thinking about it, but anyways, uh, while I was thinking, I it, it dropped. Ends up coming back up here around 11.45. No interest in it. At this point, I, I'm kind of like over it for today. I'm just like, no, I don't see anything I like. Uh, to, although I'll say, to be honest, the chart doesn't look bad for a move maybe into tomorrow, but we look at the daily chart and I've got this 200 moving average right here. That's not a great daily chart. So not in love with this one, no trades on it. Okay, next one down, um, HOVR warrants, HOVR stock. All right, so look at the stock. Looks like kind of big move up here after hours Friday, pre-market, it's already selling off. This is weakness, breaks down, no trades. Daily charts, awful. Just a, I mean, actually, I won't say it's awful. It's awful now because you have a high volume red candle. But prior to that, I could have seen this potentially being a turnaround story with move uh, room up towards uh, $5 here. That that could have that could have worked. Uh but but it didn't. Uh SPEC SPEC, this is one that I've traded before. It's at this point too cheap. It does have room also up to the 200 moving average, but nothing for me on that. ICCH, I'm going to skip over warrants. I don't like to trade them. Um, they're a derivative of the underlying value. It's better just to trade the stock than a warren, uh, with, with a few rare exceptions. And I'm not going to get into all those details because it's just not really important. It, it, it's not worth, for a beginner, focusing on the rare exceptions. It's better just to focus on things you can kind of do consistently day in and day out. So... So anyways, working our way down the scanner, you, all of a sudden, it's like, geez, we got nothing. So that's the gap scanner. And so coming into the morning, I was sitting here, you know, I was sitting here early enough, but nothing. Nothing at 7, nothing at 7.30, nothing at 8, nothing at 8.30. Next thing you know, it's 9, nothing. And I'm like, all right, we're coming into the open here. I've got nothing. I've got no trades. Now, if you recall, on Thursday of last week, I had a no trade day until... I broke the ice and traded GameStop at like two in the afternoon and ended up losing $8,000 on it. And then I lost another thousand on another stock. I was down nearly 10 grand on the day. And that was silly because, you know, my best days don't begin with a no trade day. You know, I don't go up till 10 or 11 a.m. or noontime with no trades. My best days, I'm hitting the ground running and I'm in the green nicely before the market opens at 930, trading just pre-market. Then I can add some icing to the cake by continuing to trade. So. You know, it was a mistake for me to trade on Thursday, especially after being sort of caffeinated and I had just done a, a, a webinar. And so I was kind of, I was a little exhausted and, you know, anyways, so it was a bad idea, but it, it is what it is. Um, recovered half of the loss on Friday. And right now I'm still in the, in the drawdown by, you know, $4,000, $5,000. So I've got to keep my head down, stay disciplined. And since I didn't get any trades going into, you know, news top bottom of the hour going into 9 30 once the bell rang i was like i don't know kind of feel like my window's closed 
uh, but I'll give it a, I'll give it some time. And I said, you know, once it was 1030, I was like, you know what, I'm done. I kept working and I've been here kind of uh, working today on doing some GameStop stuff, um, which again, I'll talk about in my next episode. But, you know, I've been here in front of the computer all day, but I just haven't seen anything that looked good. And and honestly, even if I saw something that did look good, I, I don't think I would have traded it because of what happened on Thursday. I just know at this point, um, you know, I, I don't want to get sucked into that because then if I get sucked into trading also, I'm not going to get the other things done that I want to get done. So at this point, it would be an opportunity cost to focus on trading during a time of day where I typically don't make a lot of money uh, afternoons. Now, that actually reminds me. Um, let's see. I'm going to grab. No, I'm not going to go there. Let's see. I'm going to grab. Where do I got to go? Um, I'm going to pull up my metrics here for trader view. So we'll do a little kind of get oriented with where I'm sitting here on the month. Um, you know, June 10th. So a third of the way through the month of um, June here, you know, making our way through the year. It's kind of crazy. But um, anyways, just continue to push along. So I'm going to import my trades from Thursday and Friday because I didn't grab those ones yet. And then I'll upload them here to TraderView. Okay. So I'm just logging in on my other screen just because it's got my username and password and stuff. All right, importing trades. There we go. So let's see how this is looking. Uh, sometimes it's... I don't know. Sometimes it's not super fun to import my trades after I've had a red day. I'm like, I don't really want to, I don't really want to look at it. But, um, you know, at the same time, kind of might as well, I guess. Can't hide from it forever. So anyways, um, yeah, so kind of that, that's the red day there. And that was that one back there. So anyways, nice green day on Friday. Thank goodness for that. Um, and I saw um, one of our uh, members had a red day on Friday, kind of like mine on Thursday, um, and a day today, kind of like mine on Friday. So Friday, you know, I, this is like, I was green 3,500, you know, and I should have just walked away and taken the small win off the table because after a red day, you got to kind of pay yourself. And then I pissed it away. I went into the red and then uh, I bounced way back into the green and was like, okay, I'm done for the day. That was, that was wild. This was, and I knew that I had to be really careful here because going from green to red can be a trigger for me. And I, I knew I was like, I probably should walk away, but this is the trade I took during that live stream on GameStop. And it, it was, the, it was, you know, it was a fine trade, but yeah, this is where I sit for the last 30 days. Let's see, go to 60, 90. So, you know, pretty steady here, I guess I'd say. I mean, this is a pretty nice trend line. Dipping down a little bit, but, you know, rally back up, I'm sure, before too long. One of my goals for this year was to try to have as few um, really bad emotional days as I could, uh, not to be, like, focusing on the negative, but I just wanted to try to have uh, a, a month that, or a year that it wasn't so... Um, emotionally kind of volatile. And I ended up having, you know, this setback here. Um, these were two days in a row, these two red days. So I had a little setback here, as you could see. And then I had, let's see, another setback. Um, I think I had one in April, although it wasn't too, no, no, April was good. Uh, but then I had another one in May. Um, let's see right there and then you know so i mean, I, i'd say right now i've had maybe like three or four kind of tough days so far this year but but overall it's been good i, I guess you know yeah I, I have this doc where is it my trading journal doc i don't think i go back to january then no i didn't i've got one two three yeah those are bad um four five wait six seven oh man oh actually now i can't tell i gotta go i gotta go update these notes because now i'm not sure if those were actually um days where i those are days where i was red on everything but um 
but no, I got to change the label on that because that th those were bad. Those are red days, but those weren't emotional hijack days. Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm accurate with my note taking here. So, anyways, yeah, had I guess it looks like yeah one, and then um, so I had that day on the sixth two three four five six yeah so i've had six days three of them were in march where i've had uh, emotional hijack so i've been having one a month uh, average this year i really got to get better with that uh last year i don't know i did i wasn't tracking them based on the number of times but it, it's part of trading that you're going to have these kind of setbacks but it's just um I don't know. It just feels like it's it's just so important to follow the rules and to maintain discipline. And so anytime I have a setback and I'm, you know, off my game from a discipline perspective, I get really I get really frustrated with myself. It just feels like shooting yourself on the in the foot. And trading is hard enough without being your own worst enemy. So I you know, it's something that I'm still working on and uh, it's still a goal for this year to just try to be a little bit better in that regard. But anyways, so today is day two of being, you know, back on a discipline streak. Uh, I was disciplined on Friday and disciplined here on Monday. Uh, I could, it would have been a little bit more disciplined if I had probably walked away on Friday just because I was, um, I did go from green to red, but I knew that I, I was pretty confident we were going to have an opportunity from that news catalyst of the stream. And, and I was, I was right on that. So anyways, I just didn't have a, a lot of cushion there because, um, I had already gone from green to red. So yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that tomorrow we'll see a little bit more action. I think we're kind of between cycles right now. GameStop has, um, sucked up a lot of attention. So, you know, that's, that's always a challenge when that happens. And, the penny stocks were a big focus for several weeks, but right now also seem to be a little bit out of focus. If you look at the top penny gappers, you know, there's nothing on here that's standing out. So we're kind of in between cycles. So the best thing to do right now is to keep your head down. Don't overstay your welcome and wait for something that's obvious. Because once something is obvious, I just find, at least for myself, that trading... Um, it's so much easier to trade with a trend when there's something that's really trending nicely. And when we don't have a solid trend, well, you're just going to spin your wheels. So there's no sense in doing that. You're going to co cost yourself unnecessary losses and get frustrated. So try to see if you can maintain that discipline. Uh, for me, I know an A-quality setup when I see it. Today, I just didn't see anything I liked. But fortunately, I had the discipline to sit on my hands. So I'll, look, I'll do that tomorrow if I have to. But typically... You know, I I don't actually. It's very rare to have back to back no trade days for me. Usually, I I will find something that that looks decent. There's usually enough opportunities each day, but today was just particularly slow. So, anyways, that's it for me. But I'll be um back at it. Uh, of course, first thing tomorrow, live streaming for Warrior Pro members, and my episode on YouTube is uh on GameStop will be uploaded to YouTube um here probably later tonight. So make sure you check that out. And I'll remind you guys as always that trading is risky. So take it slow, manage your risk. My results aren't typical, and I'll see you guys back here first thing tomorrow morning.